Hey guys, welcome back to Ask HR with Etonam. I'm excited about today's video because I believe it's going to be very helpful to you as usual. We've been talking about the three pillars for career impact inclusion influence and impact and over the course of the last few weeks we've been doing series on how to be more influential and get a seat at your table and getting yourself recognized in the workplace we've done a video on volunteering we've done a video on um, effective communication i would love for you to check all those out if you haven't done that yet now in today's video I'm going to share with you a secret that will just shoot you up there if you're able to master it. Have you observed or have you been in a situation or in a conversation in the workplace where someone said, as for this gentleman, he's just unable to harness his emotions. He's, he's just all over the place. He doesn't know how to respond appropriately to situations at all in a nutshell he just can't manage his emotions you know someone like that is considered very impulsive you you just might not be able to tell what the person's response will be so it's either the person is overly excited or very moody almost looking like a depressed person in the workplace, you need that stability. I'm not saying become predictable, but people should be able to tell that you're a stable person who knows how to respond appropriately as far as emotions go and how to display them. So what is this secret ingredient? In today's video, I'm going to share with you emotional intelligence. What is emotional intelligence? What are the components of emotional intelligence and how to develop your emotional intelligence? So stick and stay with me and let's dive right in. So simply put, emotional intelligence is understanding and being able to manage emotions. Your emotions and also the emotions of the people you interact with is as simple as that human beings we are always expressing one emotion or another but when is it appropriate when is what emotion appropriate when is it extreme when is it uncalled for how do you manage all these things all that falls under what we call emotional intelligence so if you hear people saying that's for this gentleman he doesn't display any sense of emotional intelligence or this lady doesn't display any sense of emotional intelligence. All they are saying is that the person doesn't know how to manage their emotion or consider the emotions of others. In the workplace, yes, this is very important. If people perceive you as impulsive and highly unpredictable, people just avoid having any meaningful conversation or engagement with you. So in the 90s, the psychologist Daniel Goleman, I'm, those of you who are familiar with emotional intelligence will probably have heard of Daniel Goleman. He developed five components of emotional intelligence. So these are the things we mean. These are the five components we mean when we talk about emotional intelligence. The first one is self-awareness being able to identify your emotions and your emotional triggers i'm sure you've also heard someone say this guy is just so unaware of himself so let's take a typical example you know in the work setting you are usually very free playful with your colleagues and all that and then Maybe there's this day where there's a very high-powered meeting with the investors and all these external stakeholders coming in. And so everyone is expected not to pretend but to carry themselves in such a way that they give a little bit of weight to the organization and processes and how things, they, they just perceive that this is a very serious environment. So 
people are trying to do their work with as little interruptions as possible just going about their duties you know till the whole high powered meeting is over then this gentleman just walked in and recognized that the whole bunch of new people in our midst and totally ignored the presence of these people and they just carried out his usual maybe um, shouting you know just being rowdy and all over the place just as if there were no new persons in their midst that person is clearly totally not self aware so being self aware basically means that you are able to control yourself and your emotion and your responses in different situations okay in different situations with different people so self-awareness helps you to see and understand how you are viewed by your superiors your colleagues your direct reports your clients so self-awareness is one of the components of is emotional intelligence you need to pay attention to become self-aware the second thing is self-regulation now just by the word alone you, sh you you would understand to some extent what that means so when you are regulating let's say your air condition you are trying to adjust to find the right temperature for you that's basically what self-regulation is how do you place your different emotions you are able to express to make sure that you are creating a very serene atmosphere for work being in control of your your feelings and your emotion understanding that they directly impact the emotions of others okay so you are having a conversation with someone and then the person just raises their voice in the midst of a lot of people in a way you didn't like self-regulation tells you or self-regulation will tell you to just backtrack a bit and then respond intelligently regulate for your responses the fact that someone raised the voice doesn't mean that you are also matching up the person with an even louder tone that creates tension in a space and so when you are able to control or regulate your emotion in a situation where someone is raising their voice at you or in any other situation you're able to manage and control and regulate that you are considered as someone who has mastered emotional intelligence or as someone who has an appreciation and understanding and a working knowledge of emotional intelligence particularly self-regulation the third thing daniel goldman came up or developed is motivation and yes motivation is a component of emotional intelligence because your desires fuel your actions okay so what you what, what motivates you directly impacts the actions that you take for instance if you are someone who is driven who is motivated by results you will make sure that you are completing and probably exceeding your tasks and that's what employers want to see employers want to be associated with someone who is motivated and driven so that's another component of emotional intelligence you need to pay attention to someone said empathy is about finding equals of another person in yourself so that's the next component of emotional intelligence empathy you know sometimes something happens in the workplace or just anywhere at home whatever and then someone said i wish he would just put his feet in my shoes i wish you just walk here that's what empathy is because sometimes you just calm your anger down or your judgment and criticism if you just walk a few steps in the person's shoes and understand why the person responded or did whatever it is that they did okay so empathy is that quality of being able to understand people from where they are at the moment and why they are expressing the emotions they are expressing at the moment and that is very important because it helps you 
in your communication and your response to people. The final component of emotional intelligence is what we call social skills. And that's your ability to interact with people from all walks of life. So having stronger social skills like communication, respect, tolerance, and the rest, it helps you to relate and interact with people more freely, more easily, and in a better way. So I mentioned in my previous video on communication, how that you are considered an effective communicator when you are considered and practice active listening being present with whoever it is that you are communicating with so these are the five components of emotional intelligence now how do i maybe in looking at all these components you realize that i need to straighten out myself here and there what are the things that i need to do to improve on my emotional intelligence so tip number one identify what your challenges are looking at all these components so Maybe you are a manager who is just great at helping people when they walk up to you to tell you that this is a challenge or this is the problem that I have. And then you help them to, you know, solve and mitigate the challenges. In the same vein, you realize that you are not very good at speaking nonverbal cues. Okay, so someone comes to work and the person is so burdened with something that's happening at home. And even though the person is bubbly on the regular, on that occasion, the person is just morose and dull. And the person expects that, okay, my boss will just pick this cue and try to find out or, you know, just what's going on with me. But you're just not good at that. And so that day passes, the person goes back home with their problems. And then maybe sometime later, it comes up in the conversation that, oh, this day I was going through this and that and I was hoping that you would come to find out. So you realize that maybe you are not just good at picking nonverbal cues. So you begin to look more closely, study more people, especially people that work closely with you. Study them more keenly to be able to help them even when they don't walk up to you directly you know, to help with one challenge or another. The second thing you can do is to review your emotional intelligence history. Someone will say, what is that? Well, you just sit back and do a self-assessment. This one, you don't have to go to a psychologist to do it all. You can start with yourself right where, where you are. You can just take maybe the last six months and just assess how you've responded to situations. A good starting point could be your group chats at work, your emails and other um, communication platforms. Did you just blurt out at someone in a very heated conversation? And then looking back, do you think that you could have responded more empathically, differently in a way that wouldn't create tension in the workplace? So you assess your emotional intelligence history over time and then try to make certain adjustments based on the things that we are pointing out in this video the third thing is to receive feedback receive feedback look for feedback and receive feedback i know people don't like feedback because feedback can be painful especially if it's not what you are looking for so maybe something happened, you expressed yourself as you usually would, but as you went back, you just, something just didn't sit right with you. You feel, I could have done better, but you're just not sure. So look for someone you trust who was there when the incident occurred, and then ask for the person's honest opinion. What would you do if this was you? Could I have responded differently? So you look for feedback, and based on that information, you also begin to make adjustments. I think if you've been watching my videos for some time now, I emphasize practice a lot. And yes, I'm going to say it again. You can practice emotional intelligence on a daily basis. I mentioned social skills as one of the components of emotional intelligence, and that includes listening and communicating effectively 
being respectful to people and the likes. So what's your communication like? Do you avoid making eye contact? Are you slouched in your posture? How do you communicate? Do you communicate confidently with people? Most people have mirrors in their homes. I'm sure you watching this video have one. So you can stand in the mirror and communicate with yourself in the mirror. Do you like what you see? Do you like your posture? Would you be hooked when someone is standing in front of you communicating like the way you are doing? That's just one of it. Also, take advantage of real life situations and just decide to respond differently from how you normally would in given situations. So you're deliberately practicing. If you don't give yourself to practicing this skill, you will just realize that it's been five, ten years. I've not changed. I've not improved. Everybody will say, oh, as for this person, this is just how he's going to respond. But sometimes shock people. You know, something happens and they expect that, oh, he's just going to shout at me. Maybe you're a boss. All your, your subordinates know that in this situation, he's just going to shout, slam the door and walk out of the room and use all kinds of awful words. And the thing happens and you are just so calm. Everybody just be looking at each other. What just happened here? Are we dealing with the same person? Yes, we are dealing with the same person. That's because you've taken time out to use real life situations to practice this skill called emotional intelligence. So there you have it. Another top, 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 top skill, secret, weapon, whatever you want to call it, that you will need to enhance your influence in the workplace. If you enjoyed this video, I want to know what you think. So comment, like, share the video. If you've not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Please subscribe and get others to subscribe as well. And let's grow this community of people who are winning and making impact in their workplaces. Thank you so much and see you in my next video.